Hello everyone, it's me, Coffee Stitcher. It is the second Sunday in November. I know what week we're in. Ha. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Did everyone have a have a good week? Awesome, that's really good to hear. Mm. We had a pretty good week over here too. Um uh, got a tiny scotch of haul to show. Um, got a, uh, some updates, a new start, um, a warning about this upcoming week or so, um, and then I think a little bit of Q&A, not a lot, but I think a little bit of Q&A, so we'll dive right on in, um, Sheila Norwood asks, what is the, your recommendation for quality linen purchases? What and where is the most economical place or way to purchase quality fabrics? Um, if you're looking for bulk, probably eBay. Um, pretty much across the board, um, most of the hand dyers, their prices are pretty well in line with each other, um, usually only within a dollar or two. Uh, so they are obviously wait for a sale. Um, I can personally recommend Under the Sea Fabrics, Color and Cotton, uh, Ships Manor. Um, those are my, Ships Manor and Under the Sea have been my go-to, and Color and Cotton is, um, one that I've placed a few orders with and I've liked so far, um, but I haven't, don't have as much experience with hers as I do the other two. Um, Picture This Plus is generally cheaper on 123 than it is through their website, but they don't offer the full range of colors on 123, I've noticed. Um, so it, it's a little bit of hunt and peck to find what's best. Um, but for, personally, I would say go to a hand design dyer, especially when they're doing a sale. That's a really good way to, to bulk up. Now, it will take you four to six weeks, sometimes eight weeks after a sale to be able to get your fabric. So if it's something you need desperately, I don't rec necessarily recommend that, but they do a good job. Um, so, and then you're supporting small business. Um, the gentle stitcher asks, um, how do you recommend getting wrinkles out of hand dyed linen? Also, does your mother-in-law stitch? Most of the hand dyed linens, as long as you iron them and you don't spray them with anything, you should be able to like put it between like a towel and you should be good to go there. Um, I don't ever iron anything. Um, I let, when I take it to the framer to have them frame it, I let them stretch it and that takes care of it usually. Um, my mother-in-law does not stitch. Um, a couple of people asked who the designer is of Summer Patchwork. Let me grab that one real quick. Hang on. I meant to have this in hand and forgot. It is Susan Bates. And it was in World of Cross Stitch. Number 219. And... I'm not actually seeing any real clear indicator of which month that is. I'm gonna guess it's probably either 2015 or 2016. There's an advertisement for Ultimate Cross Stitch Cards, which was in 2014. So it may even be that far back. But yeah, it's designed by Susan Bates. Yeah. 
weeks. That's the full design. So, I've got, let's see, because that'll probably be one motif. It'll be one, two, three, four. I've probably got about five more good stitching days on it. All right. Um, Kelly Bell, a lot of people actually asked about if it was related to the Debbie Reynolds movie, Tammy, um, and it's not, um, cause I asked her that too. Um, although we both agreed that that was a good idea. Oh, uh, my tattoo, I got to take the plastic part off, so there it is. Um, I've had a little bit of an acne breakout right there, of course, because why wouldn't I? Um, there it is. It's a little hard to tell. You can sort of see it there. That the Emerald City and the Yellow Record are cross-stitched. So, huh. Um, Cindy McGetty, I miss getting to do videos with Kate and Katie too, um, but I know their lives are very, very busy, and really the last, well, last year, the last two years, all of the, my middle of the week, my, like, federal holidays, they've all been on Mondays when Stitch Niche is closed. So, next year, a lot of them are now on Tuesdays when they're open, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that, uh we can maybe do some more videoing then. Um, your small room, yes, I am aware the light flickers, but if I didn't have the fan on, I wouldn't be able to film. So unfortunately that's just gonna be something that will have to be dealt with. Um, so, or it, the fan has to be on or else it's too hot and the light has to be on or you can't see me. So it's just unfortunately gonna be one of those things. Uh, Trisha, as of now, I don't think there's gonna be another tattoo. I've got a couple of ideas for things I might want to do if I get another one, but because of the profession I'm in and because I do have to do some customer facing things, um, it needs to be something that I can easily cover, which leaves very limited amounts of space that I can do it on, and I don't want to put it somewhere where I'm not going to see it sometimes. So, I may get one, I may not. Um, actually, most likely, if I get one, it'll probably be um, the lamppost from Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So, um, yes. I really wish there were more Narnia designs out there. There's, I've got the Leslie Tear, that's um, Lucy and Mr. Tumnus and the Lamp Post, um, that eventually I'll do. But I really wish there were. I wish, because um, I don't really want one that's like the Clouds Factory style. I don't know, but I don't really know what I would want. And I know if I design it, that I'm going to design it, then I'll never stitch it because I'm just one of those. So. Throwing that out there to designers, especially you British ones, because that book is in the public domain over there now. Not here, but it is over there. I'd be happy to import it from England or sell it on Etsy. Think about it. All right. So, um, I'll show the little bit of haul. Um, I ordered from Trisha of Three Owl, um, and they're, they're falling off the little thing. Um, the Etoile threads. Um, I also ordered some, a thing of John James petite needles, but since everyone knows what needles look like, I'm not going to bother showing those. Um, so I ordered it without the tin because I didn't need another tin. So I got the, the threads, which are here. Ooh. And one other that fell off. Um, they're really kind of cool. They're, um, 
only lightly sparkly. They remind me a lot of um, the Silk Lame Braid from Rainbow Gallery in that sense. Um, there's 35 colors, and it also comes with a little booklet of things you could stitch with it, which God knows when I would actually do something like this. Well, I might do that, actually. If that I say that, I might actually do that. Um, but... Um, and I've actually already used one of the blue ones in a project that I worked this week. Um, you, you can loop start with it. So it's, it's, they, they do separate easy. They lay very nicely. Um, and they're just, they're really nice to work with. They're a different texture than regular cotton. Um, and it looks like they would be a little, like, meshy, but they're really not. Um, but stitch is really nice. Um... So, without further ado, we'll slide into what my new start was. So, I put a little bit of one on a bobbin. So, see it? That's kind of it off of it. And here's what two strands looks like. Um, so, I started on Color and Cotton's um, Dried Sage, the Tiger Lily dress from Brooks Books. So I got about halfway done. I've still got the bottom half of her skirt to do and then back stitch and beads, but most of the krennic and such is on order. So I didn't want to keep going and then be like, well, now what do I do? Cause I can't finish it yet. But here it is. Um, and she also uses on this one, some of the new 35 regular colors, but I used for the blue, I used the new Etoile. So you can see it's sort of, sh it's a little sparkly. It's not super sparkly. Um, I think the blue and the white will be wonderful for snow or water effects. Um, okay. So I'm enjoying it greatly. And we'll go ahead and plop you in there and I'll finish bobbinating you later. Um, but I can definitely see these becoming part of my regular arsenal. Um, especially when I'm wanting sparkle, but not a lot of sparkle. Like, this will definitely, would definitely take the place of, um, blending filament for me. So, hopefully they'll do more colors in the line. Okay. So, my Nano Stitch Mo was Longfellow's Round Tower. And, or the first project for Nana Stitch Now, and I hit my page finish. So I am officially two thirds of the way done with Longfellow. Um, and it says, I'm gonna flip this around so I can see it. I have you fast in my fortress and will not let you depart, but put you down in the dungeon in the round tower of my heart. <laughs> so here we go. So I'm going to be sad when this is done, um, but it's been a lot of fun to work on, but I'm definitely going to miss this one. And then last week, and what's now my new Nano Stitch Mo project, was uh, I worked on Giant Harry Potter, and I, oop, that's the back, and I finished the last two motifs, so there's the invisibility cloak. Um, I did this in, um, Rainbow Gallery highlights. Um, I did a full cross for what would be the, like the necktie. Um, and then I did the rest just in a half stitch. So it had that sort of invisibility look. Um, uh, and then I did the night bus, which I actually based, um, off of Rick McKay's I think that's his name, the one who's doing the new full illustrated versions, because Mary Grandpre didn't actually illustrate the night bus at all. So I, I had to find something else to take my inspiration from. So there it is. Um, and now my new Nano Stitch, like I said, it's gonna be the next one that I do for Nano Stitch Mo. Um, 
and it will be to finish out the border. So. Which is really crazy to think about. And then once I finish the main border, then we'll go in and start working on the words down the side as well. So, yeah. And then we can finally go back to filling in the middle part. Um, so I will pick up on this one after I do, because I'm going to do the, the stocking in my rotation next. Um, and I need the same frame for that. But then once I'm done with that, that's my only real big one for the month. So I'm going to work on the stocking, and then that'll load up for Nano Stitch Mode. We'll see what I work on next. Um, now, a little bit of warning for the next little bit. Um, the new Pokemon game comes out for the Switch on Friday, and I will be getting it. And if I know myself as well as I do, um, I will probably focus a lot on that until it's done. Um, so aside from Nano Stitch Mo, there may not be a lot that happens. Um, so if not this next video, but the one after it is kind of light, that's why. So, um, anyhow, that's it for me for today. So I hope everyone has a great week. Drop me some Q&A, and I will see you all next time.